does take a lot of work and dedication to get to your first 1,000. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today, I wanted to share some tips with you guys in order for you to reach your first 1,000 subscribers. Recently, AdSense has had a lot of changes and I actually filmed a video about that. Now, I'll be linking that down in the description box and above in cards. So long story short, AdSense now requires a minimum of 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time views. So if you want more details about that, please go ahead and watch that video after this one. But if you guys want to learn how to get your first 1,000 subscribers, please stick around and let's get started. And if you're watching this video and you're like, this girl only has about 5,000 subscribers. I know that there's people that have millions of subscribers, thousands of them, but I'm here to tell you the honest truth, no clickbait. I have filmed two videos very similar to this. My first one, my first year on YouTube, and my second, I think was on my second anniversary. This is not an anniversary video. This is just me trying to help you reach that goal so you can monetize. 1,000 subscribers doesn't always come very quickly unless you have the right people, the right exposure, and a lot of luck, but it can happen to some and hopefully it'll happen to you. So how do you get to your first 1,000 subscribers? These things are definitely some things that I wish I knew when I started. These tips will not be in any particular order, but please let me know if any of them help you out or apply to you. First and foremost, know what you want to talk about. I teach you guys the latest social media updates and how to use apps and the latest things coming out in technology. And although sometimes I don't have the latest iPhone, I find a way to integrate it into my videos. Know what you're going to talk about and be consistent. It's okay to add different videos into your channel, but don't talk about food one day and then fashion unless you are a lifestyle channel. That makes a lot of sense and if you brand yourself like that from the beginning, it's going to be very easy. Brand yourself and then after you have an audience, even though they probably might not be happy for a little bit, you can expand. Number two, and this is something I actually recently started implementing and by recently I mean like a week ago. I learned how to add a subscription pop-up link. So if you go to my channel and you are not subscribed, and if you're watching this, if you click on the top right corner, you will see my links, my Twitter, my Instagram, and all that. If you click on the YouTube icon, a pop-up will come up and it will say, are you sure you want to subscribe to Miss Dashing? And I didn't actually have that. I haven't had that for the last three years. And I came across this as I was doing the research for this video. And I wanted to test it out before filming this. I have seen 30 to 50 new subscribers just this week by adding that. I don't know if it's a coincidence. I don't know if it's a combination of both but I definitely suggest that you guys add this pop-up link. Another thing that is so, so important and it actually goes alongside the first thing that I said is being consistent. Consistency is key. Right now, I have posted 170 videos and the last three months, I actually got a full-time job and I was not consistent. My numbers dropped, my watch time dropped, and that was my fault. So when I was posting two times a week, weekly, I saw a difference. It takes a lot of time and maybe you guys think you don't have time right now because you need to hit this limit, you need to be able to monetize. Trust me, when you're consistent, people come back. If your subscribers know what days you're gonna post, it just makes people wanna come back. The next two, I've definitely talked about before. I think they are so, so important. We could use my old videos as an example. First off, thumbnails. I used to think that I was great at editing thumbnails and I could be so much better at editing thumbnails, but sometimes I just get fed up. But let me tell you, my thumbnails went from looking like this to looking like this. And to me, that's massive improvement. People like to click on things that look well done. And even though beforehand my thumbnails weren't that bad, they weren't great. So make sure you have really good thumbnails. If you guys don't have Photoshop, you can work on PicMonkey, which is $7.99 a month. And if you don't have $7.99 a month, you can also work on Pixlr, which is free. And there are many other free web editing tools that you can look up. I'll be linking some down below in case you guys need them. So I said two things. Clearly, I forgot about the other banners. Banners are super important. Banners allow people to know when you post, if you want to add that on there, what your username is. Just, it gives people a little glimpse of who you are. Currently, I think I have a watercolor banner that says Miss Dashing in big bold letters. And although I like the watercolor and I think I'm gonna keep that, I might be changing up the color. I try to change my banner as often as I can, but for me, it really works out like every six months. So make sure that your banner, your picture on YouTube, all this comes in like a package. Make sure that that is up to standards because if people see that you have a banner, a nice picture, 
nice thumbnails people will definitely come to your channel and subscribe and you'll be one step closer to a thousand subscribers another thing that i did know when i started my channel but not to the depth that i do now learn a little bit about seo optimization is key for youtube and i know that there's currently this algorithm that people want to break well, let me tell you, SEO helps you with that. There are many good extensions that help you with SEO. I actually use vidIQ, but I know that there's TubeBuddy and there's many other examples. And this helps you out with tags, descriptions. It tells you how your video is doing in comparison to others when you post. It helps you to see if your video is monetized or not even before you link it. And something that I didn't know and I recently learned, metadata which i knew what metadata was but raw metadata so if your title of your video when you upload it into youtube is the title that you're going to use on youtube that helps out too because that is in the background before the seo so everything's a little bit confusing but trust me use tools that are going to help you and you guys will be a lot happier with the result the following two things that i'm going to talk about can also be grouped together and that's end cards and cards I didn't start using end cards until about, I want to say, the last year or so. Adding end cards goes with cards because with end cards now, you can add your most recent upload, a subscribe button, and then your end card, you can decorate it however you want. So it's like the last five seconds of your video. I think that's, as, that's the shortest amount it can be. It gives people something to look for or to look at when the video is over. And if they want to see your last video or your most recent upload, it's just a good way to, you know, have them go in that direction and then maybe subscribe. And that goes along with cards. Cards were recently added, not recently, but maybe also like a year ago. And with cards, just like I linked up the video in the beginning and probably halfway through if you're still here, cards allow you to pin previous videos, polls, and even your website if you confirm it through YouTube. So use every source that you can on YouTube because it helps you retain people's attention and just makes things a lot more personable. Lastly, I did know this when I started my channel, but I was really shy when it came to sharing my content. Sharing your content is key for growth. I don't care if it's one person that sees it, this one person is one view. And if you're reaching one person, that's all that matters. I used to think it was all about views, but it's not. It's about how many people you can help and how you help them. So make sure to share your content. I share my content a lot through Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. So at this point, I don't know how many things I have talked about, but I know that they will be very helpful to you guys. And the reason I say this is because I have implemented them and I've seen a lot of growth in the last year. I never thought that I would be reaching 5,000 subscribers. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please let me know down below. And I'm actually very excited because I'm going to start teaching you guys how to do a couple of new things like editing on software that is not Final Cut Pro or Adobe and something that's just on your laptop, which is iMovie. So if you guys want to see more of me, please go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. Don't forget to connect with me on Instagram and Twitter and together we'll continue learning. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.